Um, my name is Pia Murphy. I'm the chair of the Bethel Public Library, um, board of directors. Um, we decided this year that we were going to try and, and, and make this a little graphic and visual in, in addition to trying to tell our story about who we are, what we are, and why we're asking for what we're asking. Okay? So, can we have our presentation, please? <laughs> Ta-da! Action. Yeah. That just seems like a table All right, hold on. Nothing changed yet. That's not exciting. There you go. All right. All right. Good looking people on this. So, um, and I, I want to tell you, um, the pictures that you're going to see were taken by our employees so that these are really, this is actually us. When you're seeing different pictures of most of them for different uh, events, not all of them, but the majority of them are actually our employees. So libraries are people organizations, um, people driving services to people, helping them live their best possible lives, okay? So library visits. It's a national trend that uh, there's been a decline in people using libraries, but libraries have refocused their services to meet the needs of the community. Uh, and any library that's done that has really <coughs> seen an improvement. And that's what's happened to us. We've really refocused a lot of our services so that we're meeting the needs that the community is telling us they want to have and what they're looking for with their library. We've focused on staff development, programming, and opening up access and limiting restrictions. So we've really improved our usage in under two years, which has really been a pretty remarkable thing. Uh, by improving our library spaces and developing community relationships, we've also been able to provide space support and programming for both local and statewide groups. So our um, staff, it's the center of, um, and this is a, a list of all the community groups that have benefited from the library. I know it's a little hard to read, but I think there's 39 different organizations um, that have used the library in various capacities. So staff's really the center of our library services. Uh, from circulation to programming and story time, and a lot of story times for the really young kids, uh, technology and innovation and support, reference services and outreach. We have something that we call device advice, which um, if you've gotten a new iPad and you don't know how to use it, you can come in and get advice on how to actually use your device. And it's been a really wonderful thing because often you've got something and you can't fully utilize it. And that's one of the things that we knew that the community was really looking for. So that's a, a service we've really focused on. So many of these responsibilities and uh, programs are performed on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. Just a quickie. Um, for our library staff, at full capacity, we've got 1.7 hours of staff time per service desk. But if you take into account what's going on with vacation and sick time, people in different meetings, and doing outreach, because <coughs> we've been going out into the community to do more work, especially uh, with uh, all of our different schools that we have, um, we're often at a one-to-one -one coverage for, for our, our desks. So in terms of our salaries, we're requesting an increase of 1.5 from last year. Um, we've done a lot of staff restructuring that have focused on services and with our staff turnover, we have been able to bring down the percentage of the budget that is salaries. Um, within that 1.5, I wanna just let you know that that is includes a 2.25 contractual increase in salaries. So we've had a lot of staff turnover, we've got a lot of fresh new faces, and that all came with a lot of us looking at how are we going to deliver those services and what's the best staff, staff and staffing levels for us to be able to do that in order to meet those needs. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. 
um, the system shows a, a 1% drop in yeah. all sales. Yeah, Here, here's the reason why, and that's a great question. Last year, we redu the budget was reduced by $15,000. Yeah. So the top line number that you have here, which is the 882,492, yep. um, that salary was, most of that 15000 was taken out of a salary line item. Yeah. But it was never updated in the in the system that you have. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line number was done, but it wasn't run through all the other okay. ancillary numbers. Yeah, because so you if, can, you, you, if these boards can only make bottom line cuts, you allocate where that's right. going to go, right? Right. Okay. Well, if you go so, to the bottom, the last line there, you see a, a negative that's, 15. Right, okay. That's yeah, what that's what the negative 15 was all yeah. about. So that's where okay. it flowed from, but that's a great pickup. So if you looked at it, our salaries last year was um, six seven eight three one six, and what we're talking about this year is six eight eight five zero oh, three, and the delta on that, the difference on that is ten thousand one hundred and eighty seven dollars. Okay, but that that's that's a, an issue we run into because uh, just because of the way where we operate. Mm -hmm. uh, now, just to to be clear, you said that. Is some of that or all of that contractual with the, with the union? Some of that, because we have some of our employees are, are covered by a union and some of our employees are not. Okay, all right. Would you be able to update in this in this program so that we all have, at some uh, point, that's, um, no, you know, the open go. Do you, is that what we, you use? We can give you a copy of, <coughs> Copy of, an internal document. of this, this is our internal document. It's not going to match this exactly, but we can give you a copy of this, and that'll that'll show you what the what the difference was year over year. We can ask them. Uh, part of the problem is yeah. the, once the budget's approved, we locked in the open gov last right. year, yeah. and they, the board, the library board, after the fact reallocates their budget based on any adjustments. Right. So I can, I'll email the guy right now to see if there is a way to adjust the prior posted budget. Yeah, email the guy. Because uh -huh. so. yeah. that does, okay, because that does look a little, uh, it does look a little funky when you, yeah. when you look at that number. Okay, so one of the areas where we're uh, asking for an increase is in supplies. This is interesting. Um, we're we're requesting about a five hundred dollar increase to cover additional cost of cleaning. Well, cleaning what? Well, we have a regular cleaning service that comes in on a daily basis, but this is to cover office supplies and materials for circulating items and um, general staff programming supplies. One of the things is, you know, if you've got a lot of kids that just came in for story time, mm -hmm. um, forgive me. Weights. But children have a lot of germs, and we can't really wait until the evening to clean off various and sundry things. So what we've found is we need some additional dollars in there for cleaning supplies so that we can sanitize things after we have some programs. Um, and that's like Lysol for spraying keyboards and mice and the children's play area, um, cleaning out computer towers and wiping down furniture after programming. and. Um, we're also going to have a, a little vacuum cleaner so we can pick up any of the crumbs or whatever is out there. So small dollars, but a big impact in trying to keep everybody uh, from getting. What is that? That's in office expense? Is, is that I'm looking at? That's in supplies. Well, I'm not sure I don't we see have supplies. supplies. Yeah, probably have office it's expense. Office, office. office supplies. Yeah. Our says okay. office expense. Office, office expense. expense. Uh, Sorry. Well, just, just to make sure that's right, right. this shows a $500 increase. Is right. that the right number? Yes. Right, so 500, yes. you, you got to remember, in Munis, when you use a, a category like 5201, and you start out in the first account, and it would have been office expense the first time we used it, 5201 is always going to be office. Even though they may call it supplies, supplies. it's always. Oh, okay. Um, so we use a number we know, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, does that make sense? Okay. So far. <laughs> All right, good. All right, let's go on to move on to equipment. Yeah, I'm sorry that this is so hard to read. The library um, houses equipment for both uh, the staff and for the public to use on a daily and weekly basis. Um, 
in the last two years, we've been focusing on upgrading the building with equipment to turn our meeting spaces into more viable programming spaces so that um, often, uh, different local businesses could come in and use it. Um, and one of the things uh, that we've done is, for example, we have a, a smart board type thing uh, or smart uh, TV, TV um, that they can uh, project Hold on. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> but, but they can project um, whatever they want to on that so it, it goes right from their laptop or whatever device they have and it can project. And that's really been something where a lot of businesses are like, I don't, we, we, we don't, we want to have that service, but we really can't afford to, to upgrade for that. So we've done it in a way that anyone who is doing that kind of uh, a meeting can come in and, and utilize that, that capability. All right, um, so having upgraded the meeting spaces, this year we're now focusing on maintenance and upgrading all of our public terminals. Um, one of the things that uh, we really, is a big cost for us is our software costs that are um, annual expenses and that allows us to provide the services that the patrons keep looking for. Um, hardware costs update the equipment used by patrons on a daily basis. Uh, we're going to be doing a Chrome project that's going to update all of our catalog computers and create easier access in the stack so that people can easily find the books that they're looking for. So it, it cuts down on the need for them to ask the staff. It puts it right there, and then when they're in the stack, they can look up something and say, oh, OK, I just have to walk over here and find the book. So it's convenience as well as trying to um, cut down on the staff time that has to be taken up in, in helping with that. The public terminals. Uh, project will update computers on the second floor and an additional $2,500 is to maintain equipment that we already own. Um, one of the areas that we're going to be that we're going to be um, having an increase in uh, is employee education and over time this uh, line item has been $1,500 for the last 10 years um, and with bringing in some new staff and focusing on the kinds of services that patrons and local businesses are asking us for and education is asking us for, um, we realize that we need to have some additional training. Um, so that request is at $2,900 um, and we're doing a lot more in-house programming and technology instruction that uh, requires us to make sure that we're updated and people have the right kind of certification to be able to conduct pro uh, programs themselves. What kind of certifications would someone need to, to for example? Yes. Um, well, cybersecurity. We do all of our own in-house security. We need to be up to date on risks and okay. the type of um, difficulties. The Windows 10 update this year was a big um, project for us because a lot of the software we utilize isn't compatible with Windows 10. So that means on a daily basis now, somebody has to go in and reset the computers. That requires training. And then we have things like Chrome. All, the schools all use Chrome, uh, the faculty do, and it's trickling over to us now. So now we're being required to assist them with um, docs, sheets, slides, teaching them how to use mm -hmm. Drive. And it's not really appropriate for us to be teaching something we're not certified in. I understand. So was it, was it the same training across the board? Because that's a big jump, you know. It's like what at fourteen hundred dollars? You said. That's that's because in the last few years the board has been picking up the expense. Okay. And the truth is, is that it should be part of our budget. But it would be the same training across the whole um, staff, or would you? Well, so, these so this year we would start with the full time staff. Mm -hmm, okay. So and the truth is, the full time staff can then train the part time sure. staff. So, but we're looking at different components each year. So this year, since we're putting in more Chrome devices and we're doing more Chrome training, we need to have a certified staff. So by training the full-timers, we can then trickle that down. Okay, thanks. So you see this as an ongoing increase in the education, or is it a one-time um, increase? I see it as consistent around here for a few years. 
the fact is, is that the library world is changing. And you can see from our statistics, we've had to make dramatic changes in the last two years. And we're gonna have to continue to make changes, and that requires training our staff. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so then on to contracted services. Um, we've increased the um, contracts and one of the things that you all got, uh, contracts went from uh, 47500 to 49950 which is an increase of $2,450. Um, and you can see from the handout that we gave you, there it is, it says bibliomation. And that's a large part of our increase and a large part of our expense in contracted services. Bibliomation is sort of the backbone of everything that we provide to our uh, to the public. Uh, for uh, so it's got all your software updates. It takes care of our servers, helps with the um, the health desk support. It does it does some staff training as well and and some webinars, and we take advantage of that as best we can. Um, because uh, you know, there's a lot. If we can, if we can learn how to do more of this work ourselves, then then we have to rely on outside services that much less. So that's what our contracted services are. Um, one of the things that's been interesting to us in terms of dues um, is that we're not really. Uh, increasing. We're going to continue the memberships we've had in the past um, and once again take advantage of all of the discounted or free webinars, uh, seminars and conferences for, for our staff. Um, one thing to note, um, so you can see what, you know, what our memberships look like. Next. Thank you. Okay. So um, over time, our circulation <coughs> numbers have been on the decline. In 1718, we changed how we evaluate our purchasing to make sure we were spending the funds to the best of our ability and filling the needs and requirements of the community. We get a lot of feedback from people about what is, wh what is it that the public is looking for. And we've made a lot of changes both in how the collection is presented to people as well as what we're actually purchasing. Um, with that change, we've seen upward movement in our circulation. And um, we still have more and more work to do, but we really have looked at, um, you know, and you can see this. Yeah, you can see what our, our, how our circulation has changed over time. Right? So you see the, the decline of this, and now we're on an, we're on an upswing here. And um, a lot of that is because we have really focused on what are the areas that people are looking. Once again, what is the public telling us? We've really focused a lot on our children's programming and our collection there um, to make sure, and done a lot with um, story time and, and also uh, offering children to get their library card at, at a younger and younger age so that the kid, kid starts to learn the behavior of taking books out. And whereas before it may have been on the parent's card, now it's on the children's own card. And you're seeing kids coming out with like stacks and stacks of books. And that's, and, and we've had, we've really improved the, the collection so that, you know, if there's a, a series that has, let's say, 10 or 12 books in it, we have all 10 or 12 books. And so you're seeing that's one of the things that really drives uh, kids to come in and to, to, to be taking more and more books out. So that has really changed, um, as well as some things that we've done with um, bestsellers and, and, and uh, our DVD collection. May, may I ask just a quick question? Sure. Uh, there's an item in contracted services. Oh, OK. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yep, yep. CEN fiber. Hmm. Is ah. That the, is that the federal security fiber? Do you have? That's. No, that's the. What is CEN? It's the Connecticut. Connecticut uh, Education Network. Educational Network. Network. Yep. Educational Education Network. Network. Oh, okay. It's it's the fiber optic 
system that was designed for schools, but now uh, other entities, government entities, can use it at the municipal level. It's the it's the high speed stuff. Okay. You guys just got on it too, right? Uh, I think my first year, or so yeah, two years, years ago. ago. Yeah, about yeah. two years yeah. ago, and it's and and it's made a big difference. Yeah, it it's, really really it's, has. It's top level service, and it costs less than what they were paying before. From the number of people on our network, we weren't able to sustain it under the old system. Computers were shutting down. They were freezing. Mm -hmm. um, we were getting lots of complaints about our service. And the day we switched over, everything started running smoothly. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you. Sorry for. No, 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 no. Please, please. We, you know, we're trying to tell a story. You know, interrupt us as we go through our story. Um, so. Uh, all of our areas of circulation are increasing, but the most substantial has been in um, our e-content. And that's the area that we intend to apply a lot of additional funding. So one of the things that we find that's very interesting is that people, like myself, um, will use e-content. So I'm, I'm taking books out electronically, but I'm also coming back to the library for regular hard copy books and other kinds of services. And that's one of the things that we're finding is that people are looking to us for that e-content, but they're also then, it's driving people back into the library for additional services and, and programming. Um, let's see, e-content has increased by over 150% in the last five years. Um, and one of the things that we've found is that we kind of gated it. So when we were gating it a little too much, people were really complaining. And by that I meant, you know, if maybe you could only take one or two copies of a particular book or uh, downloads. downloads. Now we've got it so that it, 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 we're buying it in a different way so that more people can get more of the popular content. So we're not putting as many restrictions there. And we're finding as a result, people are coming back and utilizing uh, the services more and more. Um, programming? Okay. Um, so programming has been probably our most dr dramatic increase um, in our services, tripling over the last five years. And one of the interesting things is part of what we're doing also with some of our training for our employees is that a lot of that programming is being driven by our employees offering those those programs. So we've cut the programming cost down and been able to offer more programs, but but um, that's part of the reason why we need to have our people be better educated about, about what it is that they're offering. Um, yeah, let's see, more than 87% of our programming this last year was done by our staff. And that, that was a big, big change. Um, in terms of our telephone, um, there's no line item <laughs> increase. Sorry about that. And, um, and then the last thing to just say is that um, our library board of directors uh, covers um, a number of building improvements uh, but we, as, uh, as a board, are not allowed to fund any of the regular sorts of uh, aspects of the library. So we can do incremental things, but we can't do something like salary. Which we're prohibited from doing that kind of thing. So what we would look at is some programming. Uh, we may fund a, a programming series. We might fund a piece of equipment. We might fund some, uh, uh, yeah, furniture for the for the lab. Those are the kinds of things that we would actually do as a as a lib as a library board, and we run a fundraiser for that. Um, and then the friends do some things uh, that are uh, extras as well. They have a museum pass program, uh, the larger scale programs that we have bringing in different performers, our summer reading program, the children's new Lego table, which if, if, if you've got any kids, grandkids, you know Legos are, you know, supreme. And one of the things that we did was we got a, a, 
what I would call more of a commercial grade or a public grade, so that this Lego table can withstand many children mm -hmm. pounding on it and doing various and sundry things. But I will tell you, it's really changed um, a lot of the behavior and activity in that area because the, the kids now can access that and you're seeing that as being really You'll see kids come in and boom, that's where, that's where they're running to almost immediately. So once again, it's, it's, it's really changed the dynamic in the, um, in, in the library itself. The, um, in terms of the board of directors, uh, we've done uh, some STEM programs, we've done summer tie-dye programs, we've done some local events like uh, Food Truck Fridays, and we've been present at the Farmer's Market, which Gee, why would you have a library at the farmer's market? It's a great opportunity to let people know what our programs are, and it's an outreach to another side of town. And once again, we're part of the community. We're letting people know what our services are and, and what's going on with us. So that's, that's our story. What questions can we answer for you? I found that very helpful. Thank you. Was that helpful? It was. Okay. I, I just want to yeah. make sure I was following. Yeah, no. If I take the increase in salary, mm -hmm. 10187 mm -hmm. the increase in office expense of 500 and the increase in the e-content of 8950 that totals 19637 which by my calculation is about 89% <coughs> of the overall increase of... 22,000. 22, 62, 27. Oh, yeah, 62. <laughs> I had 20, uh, That's okay. Is that right? Is that kind of yes. generally uh, yep. where? That's, that's, exact, that's exactly it. And salaries is kind of non negotiable. Is that contractual? Yeah, we have contractual obligations on that. You um, have both. Uh, the union people not the, the, ma the majority of the staff that is covered by the salaries are represented by union by a union so fair to say the ma vast majority if not all of the 10187 is mandatory obligations pretty much okay. thank you Bye. I would just like to comment um, that what I liked about your presentation I used to have fear of the library bibliophobia because I was always worried there's gonna be giant increases and I, ne I honestly never really heard it framed with you know you, you're framing things with how you're saving money how you, you know, you're very clear about what you're doing in order to keep the cost down and I just really appreciate that one of the things that we've really um, I, I just want to say thank you to, to Megan um, for having come aboard with us yes. and, and really brought us into the 21st century. We, we have a wonderful facility. We now have a wonderful facility that has a fantastic director who is bringing us the kinds of programming that our town deserves and our cat town is looking for. And we've become very attentive to listening to what people are asking us for. So. Um, you know that's 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 been a really uh, a, a big thing with us to try and serve as many different aspects of the community as we possibly can and with some of our outreach efforts like once again you know being at the farmers market or being at the food truck Fridays you might say why is the library there we get a tremendous feedback at, at those not just that people know what we're doing but also we hear from the public in a different setting what is it that they're looking for, and we can demonstrate right, it, different it, it, things that we do. The fact that you're both that you're flexible to if shifting your paradigm of what a library is, you know, that that's me very And yet, something else we've been doing very hard last year is working with other departments. You know, like this year, AARP is coming to the library because we have more space in the senior center. Right. So this year, we're able to provide um, almost one fourth more appointments. To the community and they're filling up for tax aid um, which is you know a free tax program that AARP mm -hmm. offers through their foundation and we can service that many more people because we've been able to change some things about the library and then the schools you know their libraries are not as big and they can't provide as many physical materials so now we bring books to them on a monthly basis so if they have a demand for an author from a few select children instead of having to purchase those books they contact us 
If we can't, we don't have them, we'll go to another library and get them and then we deliver them and they bring them back to us. So, you know, we're really looking at how does the library benefit other departments in town as well. It's not just about businesses and residents, it's also about departments. Any questions? I learned a lot. Nice job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And if anybody does want to come over, yes, um, we're offering free the tours. Lego free, tours. free tours in yeah, the, Lego <laughs> <laughs> the Lego table. The Lego table is right. really I'm going to come to the Lego table. But you should come check out our project class. But any time. Are you going to spray Lysol after me? <laughs> <laughs> I might. I might. I might. I might. I might. I might. I like for students to come and study with a tutor so or So we a only currently have one, one room. One room. Um, right now the focus is on creating more space. Mm -hmm. So we've actually removed a handful of bookcases and brought in tables and right away they filled up. So what we know now is there's a need for space. Yes. So that's the next step for us. But when you open up space, they need furniture equipment. So we have to really balance how do we open up space and provide seating tables so that's another struggle we're going to be running into what goes on upstairs in the second floor there a lot okay that's, I, I don't know that's I mean, where um, our small meeting room is our large meeting room that we're currently in the process of restructuring and the board is helping us to do that so we're putting in uh, tables that can be moved so it can be a lecture room a meeting space an educational place so if a bunch of tutors wanted to get together that's what i was going to say is that there's possibility upstairs for those tutor mm -hmm. to yeah and that and, that and that's one of the things that we you know once again yeah. we heard from the community and so we're when we're looking at the space now we're looking at things as saying how do we make these multifunctional not just for a specific thing because I think in the past we looked at a room and said this is a board this is a board meeting room well eh, eh, not exactly so we're, we're trying to make sure when we're bringing in new uh, new equipment new furniture that it has multi it, it, it functions in a lot of different ways so that we're making the space as flexible as we possibly can. And, and we're repurposing, so right now we are working on the team section because when I started we had maybe four or five teams in there a day. Now it fills up. All the computers yes. are used, all the seats are taken, they're Ooh. trickling over to other tables in the room, so we're looking and teams. putting into um, that. okay, that's uh, bars, that's really uh, counters with stools, and we have all these extra bookcase tops from the bookcases we took down. So now we're looking at repurposing them to use as the tops Mm -hmm. for the bar tables. So, you know, we're really looking at how to maximize space on a budget. And it's great because we're bringing people in, but now we have to provide to them. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Bring back the wine tasting and hors d'oeuvre. We did. Well, oh well, we're having no. we're having a golf event. Don't oh, tell them it's a golf, oh, golf, golf event. event. It is a wine but it's a wine tasting <laughs> with golf clubs. Oh, that's <laughs> really, really dangerous. But at the mini golf like wine last year. The yeah. mini golf like yeah. last year, but it will be a wine tasting and a beer tasting and uh, yeah. and Mazingara uh, will be there. Mazingara will be there. And um, what is this event? This is this is this is our big library. fundraiser, um, and it's, it's going to be yeah. March. We wind up on the mailing. We, we, we shamefully put like it in our There it is, oh. March twenty seventh. Uh, is going to be the adult night, um, and that's because that's when we have our beer and wine and our food, and then the next day is uh, for kids and families to come. Who do you have lined up for food? Is it Lisa? Uh, Lisa. Yeah, Lisa. And Echo? And, uh, yes, Echo. Okay. And, um... So it's Broken Simi, Lazengar, Echo, oh. and then, um, we have, uh... Uh, Central package. Central package. That's okay. right. Daily fair. Yeah. And, and, and daily, daily fair. fair. I knew daily we were fair. forgetting somebody, <laughs> but um, it, you know, it's really it's a it's a fun event, and it actually is golf in the library itself, and the different businesses that sponsor the holes, decorate it so that it 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 it, 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 it showcases <laughs> their their company as well as you know. And it pays for the things like furniture that we need. We're not using drivers, right? We're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chipping. Yeah, but last year I was a nervous wreck. I had a golf delivery. Yeah. Okay, Nick. It was, yeah. Okay, so you remember when you're a kid? You, and probably everybody had one of those toys where you get this big Rube Goldberg thing. You put a marble in it. Oh and yeah. Mousetrap. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, yeah, that's, kind of that's that's what the mini golf is like inside the library. Uh -huh. It's hilarious. It went down the stairwell. What yeah. goes down the stairwell? Yeah, they yeah. even yeah. someone have to go down the staircase, and it was absolutely nerve wracking for me being in charge. But it was the best <laughs> hole in the entire library, and every person looped back around and did it three or four times. And what's fun is once again, it uses the entire library, so people who haven't been on the second floor yeah. and are like. Oh my God! What's up there? What's up there? Well, you get to go up there and see. That's it. where they yeah. put the beer too. So yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that is where we're putting the beer and a lot of the food. So you yeah. got to go up. You make people walk downstairs after they drink. That is not a good choice. Yeah. And, uh, well, we have an elevator. We have an elevator, and the elevator is working. Well, no, 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 no. It has to be approved by the state step. Look. Okay. The elevator is almost working. Yeah. So just so you know, we didn't have an elevator for six weeks, which really Eight weeks hurt us quite a yeah. lot. So we had no elevator for most of November, part of December. Um, I just want to say Public Works has done a wonderful job of yeah. really getting the elevator company really to come good. in and fix the problem. Um, so after a very long two and a half months, tomorrow the state's coming to yeah. search for the elevator. Yeah. We have so yeah. many people who need to use yeah. the elevators, yeah. plus we need to get the books up and down. You know, yeah, we're carrying all those books up and down. So it's gotten really strong. Yeah. Thank you all. Yes. Thank you. So do come, call us. We'll give you a, a personalized tour. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah, no, that doesn't work for that. I'll make a make a motion that the board select the chairman. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Right. Right. Any motion? Right. Make a motion that the board select the chairman. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Remember tomorrow, six forty-five. He's got to be ready. A couple minutes early. Yeah. Fifteen minutes. Hey, Bob. Can you just show me? Go to four.